What's up, guys? It's me, Jelly Knees. And I'm here bringing you the roll call for all the myths that we know about in Ethereal. Every myth that's ever been talked about, released, that isn't canceled. We do have one myth that we know has been canceled, so I won't be talking about him. But every other myth that we know about or have images of or anything like that, I got for you here today. But first off, make sure you hit subscribe because we're going over all the details of Ethereal right now. And I would hate for you guys to miss something. But before we get into the myths themselves, I want to give you guys a little teaser for a future video and get some of your thoughts on it for what you think it might be. A couple of months ago, there's that window sound we love. Um, a couple of months ago, we got this image. And it's something that something does. The, basically, that's all the info we have is that it's an image it's got six people, so it's assuming that it's targeting someone either on your team or the enemy team. And it's got this symbol that's in the center here with some blurred out part on this bottom left side, which I assume to be feet of some kind with kind of a purple-ish background uh, or character behind it. If you really zoom in and, and try and recreate it like I definitely have being the tinfoil titan I am. But I would love to hear what you guys think this ability is for, who it's for, and what possibly it does in the comments below. This is going to be my video on Friday, so I want to make sure and hear some theories from you guys and incorporate some of those into the video itself just to get some thoughts in because it's not just about what I think, it's about what the whole community thinks something is going to be and what it potentially might do for the game at large. But so this is the image. I'll have it also linked in the description below so you guys can take a closer look at it and, and zoom in and look at whatever you want of it. But we've got six characters, the icon on what I assume to be the ethereal map with some kind of blurred image on the bottom left side. I personally think that this is a Malaya ability. I have no idea what it does, but I think her being selected is more than just coincidence. But that's where I'll leave that and I'll go into more detail on Friday. So let's get into the roll call. First up, we want to talk about our pre-alpha myths. These are going to be the seven myths that we have access to in the pre-alpha that everyone will be able to play. You won't have to purchase them. You won't have to do anything like that. All you have to do is get into the pre-alpha via the Kickstarter key, and then you'll have access to these seven myths. First up, we have Aran. Aran's going to be a berserker. So just for a recap as well, the berserkers will have the ability to destroy terrain and potentially add new terrain somewhere on the map in multiple locations in order to create or block off paths from other people and other players in the game and create new opportunities for themselves. The second character we have in the pre-alpha will be Dante. Dante is going to be our pre-alpha marksman. So he will be able to go in the duo lane with whatever class is going to duo with him. We currently think that that's going to be the clerics. And the marksman ability is that they can select a target on the enemy team and deal more damage to that target throughout the game. We don't know if that target can be changed throughout the game or if it's one and done or anything like that. But we do know that that's the marksman class ability. So we have Dante here. And then moving into our third myth, we have Leah, who's going to be the Sky Slayer that we get in the initial pre-alpha. The Sky Slayer class ability will be that they can toggle a or channel a flight and use their wings to fly around the map and access areas that some of the other myths may not have access to. Now we do know that this will be a channeled ability. There will be some way to interrupt it or cause them to fall, whether that be stuns or a damage threshold or some other circumstance that causes them to fall. We also know that this will probably be on a stamina bar that they can't just endlessly fly wherever they want. They will have to use it in short bursts to make the trek from one place to another. The fourth myth we have is Malaya. Malaya is going to be the Reaper in the pre-alpha. And with her claws and all of that, the Reaper class ability is going to be that she can climb up walls and terrain, which will also prevent or give Reapers the opportunity to access areas that some of the other myths cannot. My guess is that Sky Slayers and Reapers will probably be able to reach most, if not all, of the same areas, whether that be in the jungle or in the lanes or going from lane to lane. We'll have to wait and see how that works out with the cannons and teleporters. 
But my guess is that the Sky Slayers and the Reapers will probably end up being the main junglers in Ethereal. The fifth character we have for the pre-alpha will be Marina. Marina is going to be a cleric. So she will likely be the first support character that we will have access to in Ethereal. So it most, most likely we're going to see Marina and Dante in the duo lane, whichever lane that may be, be it Void, Fire, or Ice. That's the lane we're probably going to see these two in primarily during the pre-alpha. The Cleric class passive or class active will be a Ethereum path. There are currently that we know about four Ethereum paths for the clerics to choose from. And each path will have its own ability or something special about it that'll benefit each cleric differently depending on which path they decide to take. Now, my personal theory on that is that we're going to see some kind of tank support Ethereum path, a caster support Ethereum path, a healing support Ethereum path, and then some kind of immobilizing support Ethereum path of some kind, which I think will be very val valuable. And we'll have to wait and see how that works with Marina's abilities that we don't know yet either. So that is number five, I believe. So we have six is Noxus. Noxus will be the Archmage during the Ethereal Alpha. And the Archmages are going to have the class ability of placing teleportation sigils around the map. Now, when we talked to UG during the Extra Life event back in October or early November, excuse me, excuse me. Um, they did mention that they will have a set limit of portals that they can place out around the map. And they will also be able to be used by more than just themselves. Their teammates will be able to use these portals. And there's going to be some kind of indicator that lets the enemy team know that somebody has used one of these portals either nearby them or map wide, whether it be a sound or a notification. There's going to be some kind of indicator is what we were told in the Extra Life event. These will most likely be your solo laners, your solo mid laners. Uh, I personally believe that that lane is going to end up being void lane. So we're likely to see the Archmages probably in that lane most. Being between the two lanes, it gives them the most versatility in terms of rotations from ice to fire or ice to void or vice versa. And the final myth that we have in Ethereal's pre-alpha will be Talos. Talos is going to be your knight class in the Ethereal pre-alpha. And I've probably said the Ethereal pre-alpha 500 times at this point, so I apologize, guys. But the Knight class ability will be that the Knights can choose to go on a Relic Hunt throughout the game. And this will mean that they have to complete some, some quest or a set of quests in order to gain access to a very rare item that only they can get by following these quest lines. When they do that, they're going to complete these quests, get the item, and then be vastly benefited for their time and investment into that quest line. So Talos being the first myth that we have going into the Knight class, it'll be very interesting to see the different uh, actives or passives that we get from these relics that they are able to find and how it'll interact with other items in your inventory, whether it takes up a slot or it's by itself or something among those lines. We'll have to wait and see. But we did find out in the again the extra life dev stream q a that currently the knights have four different relics that they can pursue throughout the game and that these relics are vastly different in effect so we'll have to wait and see what each of those does but that covers all seven of the pre-alpha myths now what we don't know is once the pre-alpha launches how often they're going to release more myths into ethereal whether that's going to be they're going to take the game down and patch them in over a set course of time or just put it in, them in an update while the game is live. We don't know how that's going to work. But we do know that there are several more myths that we've heard and seen about that aren't included in this initial seven. So first up, we have Acheron. Acheron, I mean, this guy just looks incredible. The, the flaming magma sword, he's blind like Noxus. So I'm very curious to see if there's any tie in there but otherwise looks great he also belongs to the knight class just like talos so he will follow the relic system as well we know about xcl who's going to be a reaper the cool thing about xcl will be that he's got some kind of twin shadow-esque ability or theming to him so i'm curious to see where that comes in 
And you can see on his swords, you have two different kinds of gems that also correlate to his two different kinds of eye color. So he will be a Reaper. This is also actually Malaya's brother, um, but we don't have a ton of lore background on that because I know that they're changing a lot of it. But that's what we do know about XEL going in. Now we have Grace. Grace is very interesting because in this early concept art, Grace had white hair and that giant mech behind her. And somewhere in the line, she's kind of changed a little bit to be a little more, I don't, I'm not realistic, but just different. Um, so this is the image we have for Grace, where her outfits kind of changed. It's not that white like you were seeing before in the concept art. And even though I don't have a photo, we have seen renderings of her mech. And I'm very curious to see where that's going to come in. It's presumed that uh, Grace will be a cleric, being that she is clearly some kind of medic. And the cleric class is kind of like your supports. But we don't know that for sure. She could fall anywhere in that list of myths and classes. So we don't know much about Grace other than she has the mech. And then this is kind of her general look, at least last we saw. Next up, we have Grognark who will be a berserker as well. So he and Aran will be the two first two berserkers in Ethereal. So they will be able to destroy and add terrain together, which I'm really excited to see Grognark play. Uh, it, from what we've seen in the lore, Grognark is huge. So I'm really curious how his size will make a difference in the game and how he will compare to other myths like Nikolai, which we'll get into here in just a moment. Now we have Chief Akaika, or I believe maybe his name has just been changed to Akaika. There's no chief in front of it anymore. Um, Akaika, we presume, has some kind of fire ability just based on his kind of overall look and the theme that we've seen. Um, Akaika will be a archmage, so he will have access to those teleportation sigils. But that's really all that we know about him for the moment. Next up, we have Kalia. Kalia will also be an archmage and have access to the teleportation. And basically that... This is all basically all we know. We know the voice actor, voice actress, sorry, um, has done a great job with her voice lines. And Mangoose and I, have, this is our personal favorite myth, whether it be design or voice lines or anything like that. So I highly recommend you go check out all the voice lines for any of the released myths, but especially Kalia's because it's just so much fun and you get that energy from it as well. Uh, next up, we have another marksman, which is Malware. Malware is probably my most anticipated marksman, definitely over Dante, but almost most anticipated character just across the board. I really can't wait to see how Malware comes into the game and makes a difference with his whole virus aesthetic that he has going on. And it'll be really interesting to watch and see as it develops into the game. So he will be a marksman. He will be able to select a target and do more damage to them over the course of the game. Like I said, no for sure information about whether we can switch targets or anything like that, but we'll have to wait and see to know more. Next, we have the little cute boy, Nikolai. Nikolai is a cleric class, very big on his music. So he's a, he's a musician in the world, and from the voice lines that we've heard, the abilities will be very based on music theming and, and duets and things like that, and it'll be really cool to see how he works together with the marksmans in the game to bring a better experience to the duo lane. Finally, one of the last myths we know at least a decent amount of information about is Zero. Zero will be the second Sky Slayer to Ethereal, and I think will be very interesting to see more of as the game progresses, because Zero does have a pistol, and Sky Slayers being able to fire on you from above seems like it could be a very strong mechanic that we'll have to wait and see how it plays out in the game and, and how the balance works in there in that favor. So the Sky Slayers being able to fly around the map are going to be very, very strong and have to be probably very carefully tuned with zero in mind and the ranged ability of the pistol. So the those are all of the myths that we know about and have some renderings on and information. And I kind of want to go into some extra myths that we've seen just kind of one off or or in mention in passing that we we don't really have any information on but we have some art or just some information or they just kind of show up somewhere first up i want to talk about is yara yara's got this giant warhammer 
uh, this is clearly some kind of concept art, so it's all subject to change. She may not look like this in the final version, but she, to me, is looking like she's going to be a berserker. And part of the reason I say that absolutely is that this image is actually labeled Yara underscore berserker. So my guess is she's going to be a berserker, which is very different from what we've seen with Aran and Grognark as the other two berserkers. She's going to use the hammer, presumably, to do a lot of that damage to, to the environment and create the opportunities a berserker can in the game. Another one we know about, or rather have seen, but don't have any information on, and I just kind of discovered her recently, is this image of uh, this woman. I have no idea what her name is. I have no idea what class she belongs to. Uh, the daggers make me feel like it's a probably a reaper, being that Malaya has got the sharp claws, Exile's got the swords. It's a very common thematic among the reapers, but easily could apply to any class, and that's just the design that we've seen. I mean, this image, if you look at the bottom, says it's copyrighted in 2018, so clearly it's very old. I had to dig back through the Undying Games subreddit in order to find this image. So I'm curious what you guys think about this myth and what potential for her abilities are. I mean, coming from Paragon, I think of the Fae when I see this. But not really for any good reason other than they both kind of share that nature vibe. So I'm very curious to see how this is going to work and how she might come in if she's even still around in Ethereal. And the last one was kind of a, a unknown character to me. And I just kind of recognized it recently after looking through this image for a previous video is this guy in the obelisk image that I showed off in the map video. There's this guy standing next to or in front of the obelisk and there's no mention of him anywhere else. I've never seen anything on on the subreddit, the discord, any of their social medias on the website. And I've dug through everything to try and find information on him. And I can't quite figure it out. Another myth like the previous, we don't have any information. We don't know anything about him, what class he belongs to, his name, anything like that. I don't believe that this is any of the myths that we've already seen, but it maybe has changed cosmetically because his theme is very different from all the others we've seen. If I had to take a stab at who this might be, or rather what class he might belong to, I would say he's probably an overseer being one of the only classes we haven't had any information on, assuming they still exist. But he's also got this like shadowy trail about him that doesn't quite look like it's coming from somewhere else. It looks like it's coming off of him and his cape. So I'm curious if he's got some kind of shadow stepping ability where he can turn invisible or teleport and you only see like astral shadows from behind of where he is. So it'll be very interesting. And again, I'm very curious to hear your guys' thoughts about what his abilities might do or what class he might belong to as this is the only instance that we've seen this myth in everywhere I could find on Ethereal. So please, if you guys know something, definitely let me know down in the comments below, but I just want to hear thoughts and overall opinions about all of that. And before we end, guys, I do want to remind you that we have this image that we're looking at for Friday's video, and it's some kind of ability. We have Leah, Dante, Grognark, Malaya, Zero, and Owen, who is the scrapped myth that I was talking about earlier. So he is no longer in the game, so ignore him as a myth. These are also, were told to us to just be placeholder images. So please, guys, let me know what you think about this image. Send it to your friends that are interested in Ethereal, and get let's get some good theories brewing. I want to go over as many as I can on Friday's video when we talk about it as a whole. But guys, that's going to be it for me this, this week, today, not this week, today, for the roll call video and if you guys want to see more ethereal content there's going to be a playlist right up there that will have all the ethereal content that i've made thus far and then right below it there's going to be a playlist that's rec or a video that's recommended for you by youtube or whether it be on ethereal or something else and then if you see my little icon appear to the left of me or i guess your guys is right i don't know what side we're on uh then click that hit subscribe and get the bell on and I will see you guys for tomorrow's video.